Hello, this audio bite is entitled How to Help Your Child Perform Play Audiometry in the Audio Booth. By watching this video, you will learn the answers to the following questions. What is play audiometry and why is play audiometry important? Why is it important for me to practice play audiometry with my child? When should I start practicing play audiometry with my child? What kinds of toys should I use to practice play audiometry? What is the best way to start practicing play audiometry? What is play audiometry and why is play audiometry important? During play audiometry, a child performs a task in response to hearing a sound. In other words, when your child hears a sound, they will perform a task such as dropping a block into a jar or putting a piece of a puzzle together. Why is it important for me to practice play audiometry with my child? Practicing play audiometry is a very important part of preparing your child to be successful during hearing tests in the sound booth. Our goal is for your child to indicate that they hear as many sounds as possible. The better your child knows how to respond to sounds, the better idea we will have on what your child can hear. This in turn will help us to make the best possible choices for your child, including what technology they should wear and how these pieces of technology should be programmed. When should I start practicing play audiometry with my child? You may start practicing play audiometry when your child is approximately 24 months old. It is great to start as soon as your child is ready to do so because we would love for them to start using play audiometry by the age of three years. What kinds of toys should I use to practice play audiometry? A wide variety of toys can be used during play audiometry. That's part of the beauty of it. Quiet toys should be used so your child can listen to the sounds being presented. As far as which toys you should use, whatever toys your child is interested in is best for them. Here are some examples of toys you may use when practicing play audiometry with your child. The toy you select should not be too interesting to your child because we want them to focus on listening to the sounds rather than playing with the toy. The goal is to start simple and use the same toy every time with your child. This will help to train them that whenever those toys come out that you're going to practice play audiometry and they will associate that toy with the task of play audiometry. Play audiometry should be practiced in a quiet place so that the child may focus on the task at hand. What is the best way to start practicing play audiometry? The best way to start practicing play audiometry is by using the ling sounds. These sounds include m, mm, u, a, e, sh, and s. The reason we focus on these sounds is because they cover the range of frequencies, high and low, as well as intensities, loud and soft, of all of the speech sounds. The ling sounds are great to ensure that your child is able to hear all of the speech sounds which is necessary for them to be able to produce them. Then when your child understands the objective of play audiometry, you may proceed to using recorded sounds that are actually used in your child's sound booth. You may obtain these recordings by talking to your audiologist. In order to practice play audiometry, ask your child to hold the object that you have chosen next to their cheek, just like this. This shows that they are ready to listen. Then present one of the ling sounds to your child so you may say, mmm, and you would expect your child to take the toy, and in this case it's a stacking toy, so you put it on the base. Then they would get ready for the next sound by taking the toy and holding it against their cheek again. If you said, ooh, you would expect them to take the toy and stack it back onto the tower. And you may repeat this with each of the ling sounds. First, you may want to sit in front of your child so they know that when they hear you make a noise, or in this case, they will also be able to visually see you make the noise that they are expected to place the object in the appropriate position. When the child understands the expectations, you may sit beside your child to present the ling sounds since we want them to respond to the sounds auditorily rather than visually. If your child struggles with the task of play audiometry, hand over hand may be used. In this case, you may place your hand over your child's hand and guide them in performing the task of play audiometry when the sound is heard. This is what the hand over hand strategy for play audiometry would look like. Pooh here is my little child. So I would help Pooh hold the toy next to his cheek. And when I present the sound, ooh, 
I would help guide his hand to stack the toy onto the tower. I would repeat it again and continue to do this technique until he was able to do it by himself. The hand over hand may be phased out as your child begins to learn the expectations of play audiometry. In this audio bite, we have discussed what play audiometry is, why it's important, and how you can practice play audiometry with your child. I hope that this audio bite has been informative. Thank you for watching.